Today, why the terror threat in Northern Ireland is the main preoccupation of the British security services. It has never gone away, but there has been definitely a resurgence. There's been a lot of recruitment. I mean, at the start of this year, there was an attempt to buy arms and explosives in Lithuania by one of the factions. Britain's security services are spending more time trying to prevent terrorist activity in Northern Ireland than any threat posed on the mainland, The Guardian has learned. The threat comes from dissidents opposed to the power-sharing agreement that has been taking shape since the Good Friday Accords of 1998 and is at its highest level for several years, sources say. I asked our Ireland editor, Henry MacDonald, for more on what the police and security forces have been saying. They're saying the threat is quite high. Now, Hugh Ward, the chief constable of the PSNI, has even gone to the extent of saying it's the highest it's been in terms of threat level since he became chief constable. So I think that in itself, that statement gives you an indication of the seriousness of the situation at the moment. And where do they think the threat is coming from? The threat is outside Greater Belfast. It's in the rural areas, particularly the border from Mana and Tyrone and the city of Derry are the three, if you like, hotspots. Are, are these groups or individuals? Give us some background about the, these potential terrorists. These are groups, but they're very disparate groups. So, for example, it, in Derry City, it would be the uh, faction of the real IRA who, are, who pose the threat. In County Tyrone, it would be former members of the provisionals who are now calling themselves an organisation called Oakland Erin, and they would be comprised of people who would have a lot of experience in terrorism and paramilitarism. And in Fermanagh, it would be another organisation called the Continuity IRA, a much older dissident organisation that's been around since the end of the 1980s. So essentially what you have is a, a mixed match of different factions in different areas, and that's probably their, their one weakness I, uh, that I'm highlighting in The Guardian t today, that it's the, their, their disparity and the fact that they don't have any unified command is what's making the drive against them, the security drive against them, somewhat easier. Nonetheless, it's thought that they could create a, a certain amount of havoc if they, uh, if they wanted to, or if, they, if they're not prevented from doing so. I, indeed, they could, but I think it's a measure of the success of the secret war against them at the moment and the fact that there's so much human and technical resources being poured into countering the threat that they haven't really got what they want, essentially, which is, to be blunt about it, a kill. They have, they have attempted to kill police officers, um, and they came very close in June with a, a lamp mine explosion in County Fermanagh which only didn't go off part, only went off partially because they didn't have a proper detonating system. But the point is, there is an awful lot of resources being directed at them at present, more even in, in terms of head of population than there would be against Islamist terrorists in, in, in Great Britain. So it gives you an extent of the, of the time and energy being poured into countering the threat, stopping them from destabilizing the political process. So tell us a bit more about the, the kind of targets that security services believe might be in the firing line. The target range is widening. I, I have discovered that it isn't just police officers who are now in the, in the crosshairs of these terrorist groups. A number of prison officers over the last few weeks have been moved from their homes following death threats, following intelligence that they were being targeted. It's, it's primarily, though, their, their prime target are Catholic recruits to the PSNI. The, the logic is very cold and brutal. If you shoot a Catholic recruit to the PSNI, it may deter other Catholics from joining the force and thus preventing them from, preventing the force itself from becoming a kind of more balanced, reflective police force for the entire community. It's quite, it's quite cynical logic, but it, it works. It worked in the early 1970s. So they are the two main target groups at the moment, obviously the British Army too, but the British Army are thin on the ground in Northern Ireland, they're, they're in barracks, they don't patrol very much anymore, and so they're, they're, they're not a much more a visible target than police officers, and now, as we, as we will reveal today in The Guardian, prison officers are also in the firing line. Does this represent a resurgence in, in terrorist activity, or has it just not gone away as one might have expected it to? It has never gone away, but there has been definitely a resurgence. There's been a lot of recruitment. I mean, at the start of this year, there was an attempt to buy arms and explosives in Lithuania by one of the factions of arms dealers who indeed were, were actually intelligence agents posing as arms dealers. There has been an insert, uh, a, a resurgence, definitely. It has always been there, but if you think of the Oma bomb anniversaries coming up, that was 10 years ago, I think the, the level of threat is now as high as uh, today as what it was a decade ago.